John Lusk here of Lusk Archery Adventures, and I'm excited to start some more broadhead testing for 2019. I just have a passion for broadheads. I'm a, I'm a broadhead junkie, there's no question about it. I've tested nearly a hundred different broadheads from single bevels, double bevels, two blades, three blades, four blades, all kinds of mechanical testing and stuff like that. You can look here on my channel, I've got a bunch, I think about 20 different broadhead testing videos on my channel. So research what which ones you know really might work out for you. But this year the first one I'm going to test is one that grabbed my eye at the ATA and it's by a company called SIK. S I K. SIK. Like, ooh, that's a sick head, okay? That means like cool for your older people. So it's a it's a SIK broadhead, S I K, and this one is called the SK2. Okay? So it's the SK2, 100 grains. It only comes at 100 grains, and you can see here a picture of it blown up right there. And you can see that it's a it's two blade head. It's got a, a two inch cutting diameter when fully deployed. And it uses this uh, this unique kind of collar here they call a flight lock that holds the blades in place. Different than an O-ring, different from anything else I've seen. It actually kind of goes over the blades. The blades snap into it and it holds them in place but it pops off when you, uh, when you shoot them. And so another unique thing about the head is I don't know if you can make this out but the blades are offset. So when they're fully deployed, most, you know, most blades on a mechanical, they deploy and they're in line like that. This one is like this, okay? It's like that. And it's two inches from tip to end, but it also overlaps. So it's actually cutting more tissue than just that two inches. It's all steel. Um, man, the tip is really nice. Got a really nice trocar tip right there, super sharp, kind of like a wasp head right there, you know, the, the front of the, of the wasp. It's all steel and, um, and, uh, and then it's got these offset blades. And so I'm not sure how durable it's going to be, but that's what I'm going to be testing for. I'm sure it's going to fly really well, but I want to test it for dependability. Is it going to open properly? Is it going to stay open? I'm going to test it for durability. How does it hold up to some tough mediums? And then I'm going to test it, for, test it for penetration. And I've got a new way that I'm going to be doing the testing here in 2019. I uh, built kind of a little cage, like a box with wood, so I can insert different layers and uh, see how the broadheads penetrate, how they, they deploy and hold up through these different layers. And you can see it from the side. And I got that idea from Afflictor. I was looking at the way they test some of their broadheads on YouTube, and I thought, hey, you know, I'm going to imitate that. So mine isn't nearly as cool as theirs, but I threw some boards together and it's going to work for me. And so I'm using a MDF. I got half inch MDF boards. I decided to go with that instead of plywood so because it's much more uniform. And comparing broadheads is all about having a uniform medium. That's why I don't use animal parts. They have bones have different densities, different geometries, and you're not going to get a fair comparison. So I'm using this MDF rather than plywood because it's more uniform you know, than having a knot or certain splits or grains in the plywood. And I've got several layers of that. And then in the front and the back, I've got a layer of rubber foam that's kind of to simulate hide. So it's a little softer when it first hits because of that, that little rubber foam is going to absorb it. And that'll see like how well it opens, how well it might really open on a deer or a hog or something like that. Then it hits the layers of the MDF and then uh, we'll see how deeply it penetrates. And I've got a big board behind it and I've got a, a big target behind that. So I'm hoping I don't go into my wall here, but we're going to be testing it out and see how well it does. And I'm going to be comparing it with the NAP Kill Zone. The NAP Kill Zone is just kind of a perennial favorite. It's been around forever. It holds up really well. I've taken a lot of animals with it. My only beef about it is it's not the best penetrating head, which makes it kind of a good thing, a good head to compare new broadheads to because I can see how they penetrate compared to the kill zone, and I'm hoping they penetrate better than the kill zone. If not, I'm not really interested in using them, especially if they just have the same uh, cutting diameter. I just assume go with the kill zone. So anyway, we're going to shoot these, these uh, through this and see how well they do. I'm really intrigued to see what happens. Okay, so here's the first shot with my new broadhead box here. Let's zoom it in just a little bit. And this is with the SICK SK2 mechanical. Now I'm going to shoot the NAP kill zone. Okay, let's go see what happened. So here you can see where they went in and I measured those out 
you can't really tell exactly here. Yeah, you can see the uh, the sick when you stretch it out like that. But both of the cuts of both these heads were over two inches, and uh, they were about actually about two and a quarter inches. They were equal in that sense. But again, there's more stuff being cut with the SK2 on the left there because there's that overlap. So from here to here is two inches, but there's like actually more than two inches of cut because they overlap like that. And there you can see the, uh, the classic kill zone cut. Now in terms of penetration, the kill zone kind of went in at a funky angle or it, it angled when it did hit. They both blew through the first layer of MDF and then they got wedged, or actually the, uh, the sick got wedged in the second layer. You can see it right there. And the kill zone just barely poked the second layer. And then in terms of coming out, you can see that that second layer, the sick poked through about three quarters of an inch out the back and the, uh, the kill zone did not. It, it didn't even come close to going through that second layer. So two layers of MDF plus that rubber foam mat in the front. Let's pull them apart and see how well they Here's the two heads after I pulled them out. The kill zone is in pristine condition. I mean, honestly, it looks... I mean, no blades are bent. It looks brand new. I could just resharpen it up and use it easily. Um, not so much with the sick. You can see that the blades are pretty fried. They're pretty thin and they feel a little flimsy there. Um, but they didn't break, you know, they just bent. And that's okay. I mean, for a mechanical, I'm not really necessarily looking for blades that don't break or that, that uh, don't bend, although that'd be nicer. But uh, as long as they don't break off, that's a good thing because they continue to cut even they're, though they're at kind of a crummy angle like that and kind of bent up. So overall, um, not perfect, but it was encouraging to see that and to see that the penetration of the sick is, was better than the kill zone, even though it's cutting more tissue, that was really cool to see and that it opened really easily uh, and fully on impact and stayed open throughout. Now I'm going to shoot this SK2 at the half inch MDF at a 45 degree angle and see how well it does on an angled shot. Looks like it's stuck in there really well. Let's go check it out. In the initial exam here you can see that uh, it actually did skid a bit right there but it looks like the blades opened. Let's pull the, the board apart and see how it looks. Here you can see the back side of the board and what happened, the blades just barely made it through the board. Actually, they, they weren't quite all the way through. I just pushed it through a little bit at the end. Uh, but you can see one of the blades completely came off at the pin there. I was a little worried about that pin and how strong it would be. And there you see on an angled shot, it just completely came off. The other one held in place okay, and uh, it just got a little bit bent up.